Welcome to my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World, where I've taken a diverse mix of people and broken them down into 10 different categories. There are some famous scientists as well as some lesser known ones, but all of these people have had an influence on the world. Our Everyday Essentials began as an individual's flash of inspiration, leading from an initial idea to mass-produced reality. From basic appliances to advanced technologies, masters of invention revolutionised society. So who are some of these incredible innovators? Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 in a town that was at the time part of Austria-Hungary and is now part of Croatia. Tesla enjoyed watching his mother inventing different appliances around the house and he attended university to study engineering. Tesla worked in Paris for the Continental Edison Company and while on assignment in Strasbourg he constructed, in after work hours, the world's first induction motor. This used a rotating magnetic field to create movement and ran on his new idea of alternating current power. In 1884 Tesla moved to America with four cents in his pocket and sought employment. He sold the rights to his alternating current dynamos, transformers and motors to George Westinghouse. The alternating current method, which had the flow of electricity constantly change direction around the circuit, competed with Thomas Edison's direct current, which has electricity flow in one direction. Tesla went on to develop the Tesla coil that is still used in radio and television technology, demonstrated the first remote controlled boat in 1898, and Tesla's AC hydroelectric power plant was built at Niagara Falls in 1895. James Watt James Watt was born in 1736 in Scotland. His father owned a shipbuilding and housebuilding business, and this is where James received some of his education, working with his own tools in his father's workshop, making models of various things such as cranes and barrel organs. Watt found an opportunity to work as an apprentice making mathematical instruments, and eventually opened his own shop in Glasgow. In 1758, a meeting about the science of steam inspired Watt to research steam power and come up with ideas for his own equipment. His interest was further fuelled while repairing a model Newcomen steam engine, when he observed that it wasted a lot of energy, and decided to find a way to improve it. While trying to devise a way to improve it, he hit upon his greatest invention, a separate chamber which would condense steam without cooling down the whole engine. This design was more efficient and in 1769 his design was patented. With this new design, steam engines could now power factories, turn water wheels, drive ironwork bellows and propel trains and steamships. This brought about rapid progress during the Industrial Revolution. This meant that goods could be produced on an unprecedented scale. Alan Turing Alan Turing was born in 1912 in England. He attended the University of Cambridge to study mathematics. While still a student there, Turing outlined his theory of a universal machine, a device that could solve any problem using a set of coded instructions that were stored in its memory. This paved the way for modern computer science. During World War II, Turing worked at a top secret British base, Bletchley Park, as a codebreaker. At the time, the Germans were using a typewriter-like device called the Enigma machine to send coded military messages. Turing and his colleague Gordon Welchman developed the bomb machine to decode the messages. Their work breaking the German codes shortened the war and saved millions of lives. After the war, Turing produced designs for a computer, the Automatic Computing Engine ACE. Although it was never built, it did lead to the production of the world's first general purpose computer called the Pilot ACE. Turing also developed the Turing test, which is a method to see whether a machine has human-like intelligence. This continues to inspire thinking about intelligent machines to this day. The Hollywood film The Imitation Game was based on the life and work of Alan Turing. Sir Tim Berners-Lee Tim Berners-Lee was born in 1955 in England. Both of his parents worked on the first commercial computer, the Ferranti Mark I, and computing came naturally to Berners-Lee. He attended Oxford University from 1973 to 1976, receiving a degree in physics. Following his graduation, Berners-Lee had various roles within the computing industry, including some time as a software engineering consultant at CERN, the European Particle Physics Laboratory in Switzerland. While there, Berners-Lee developed a program for himself that stored information in files and contained links to other files, a technique known as hypertext. While designing the computer systems at CERN a few years later, Berners-Lee drew up an idea for creating a global hypertext system. 
His aim was to develop something that would allow scientists to easily share their work with each other without the need to send multiple emails and thus the first web server was developed as well as the first web browser. On 6th August 1991, the first web page became available. In 1994, Berners-Lee established the World Wide Web Consortium which lent oversight to the web and the development of standards. With his development of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee changed the way we communicate forever. Rudolf Diesel Rudolf Diesel was born in 1858 in France. When he was 12, his family moved to England. However, he was soon sent to school in Germany. Diesel scored brilliant results at the Technical University of Munich and went on to work on various engineering projects, including plans for a refrigeration plant. Diesel was inspired by a lecture on thermodynamics, the study of heat as a form of energy, and devoted much of his time to developing an internal combustion engine that would use fuel more efficiently than gasoline engines, which were big, slow and relied on a spark to ignite the fuel. Diesel's new design used highly compressed high temperature air to ignite its fuel, and he obtained a patent for his design of the new internal combustion engine. This new engine became known as the diesel engine, and the refinements he made to it meant that it could be successfully produced commercially. Running on cheap fuel with twice the efficiency of steam engines, the diesel engine was a huge success. Today, factories, generators and the modern transport system are all powered by engines based on diesel's design. Ali Javan Ali Javan was born in 1926 in Iran, where he attended school and started university. However, his family moved to America at the end of World War II. Javan attended many courses at Columbia University and was able to receive his PhD without ever first gaining a bachelor's or master's degree. Javan started off his work here researching the atomic clock and using microwave beam spectrometers to study the structure of atoms. His research started leading him towards his invention that changed the world, developing the idea of a gas discharge helium neon laser. Javan joined Bell Telephone Laboratories shortly after conceiving of the idea, and his paper about it was eventually published in 1960. Javan's gas laser was the first continuously operating laser. While other lasers used a lot of energy to produce short bursts, Javan's laser generated a constant beam of light. It works by carrying an electric current through a gas to produce a strong light. Javan split a cash award from US President Johnson with Theodore Maiman in honour of their work. The gas laser was an incredible feat of technology and became a permanent feature in barcode scanners, medical equipment and internet data transmission. Grace Hopper Grace Hopper was born in 1906 in the United States. From an early age, Hopper was interested in how technology worked, and at age seven, she took apart seven alarm clocks to explore how the parts worked together. Hopper graduated with a bachelor's in physics and mathematics, followed by a master's and a PhD, both in mathematics. She taught mathematics at Vassar College before joining the US Naval Reserve. While on assignment at Harvard University, Hopper was working on a series of early computers. One day a moth caused a problem by flying into one of the computers and being trapped amongst the circuits. Hopper referred to the issue as a bug, which is still a term used today to describe errors in computer programs. At the time, only mathematical notation could be used to program computers. However, Hopper felt that programming should be for everyone, and so she created Flowmatic. This program allowed for English words to be used as commands. This led on to the development of the programming language COBOL, laying the groundwork for other programming languages such as Scratch and Python. John Logie Baird John Logie Baird was born in 1888 in Scotland as the youngest of four children to the Reverend John Baird. His degree course was interrupted by the First World War and he never returned to university to graduate. Among the many developers whose work resulted in the television, Baird was a prominent pioneer and made major advances, including being credited as being the first person to produce a live, moving, grayscale television image. Baird then called an office worker into his laboratory to see what the transmission of a human face would look like, and thus the transmission of a live human face was achieved in 1925 by Baird. 
1926, Baird demonstrated television moving objects at the Royal Institution. He demonstrated colour television in 1926. In 1928, Baird's company achieved the first transatlantic television transmission. And in 1929, he convinced the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, to allow him to produce half-hour shows at midnight three times a week, leading to a television boom. In 1936, the BBC held a competition between Baird and EMI and broadcast the two systems from London. However, a fire destroyed Baird's laboratories, leading to EMI being declared the winner. Baird never really recovered and was nearly forgotten by the time of his death. However, he is now widely recognised for his contributions to the development of the television and has been ranked among the top 10 Scottish scientists and in the top 100 greatest Britons. George Washington Carver George Washington Carver was born into slavery at some point in 1864, exactly when is unknown. After slavery was abolished, Carver and his older brother were raised just like their former owner's own children. Due to his race, Carver struggled to be accepted to college. He persevered, obtained a bank loan and became the first black student at Iowa State University where he studied for a degree in agriculture, eventually receiving a master's degree. Carver was employed at the Tuskegee Institute where he studied for the rest of his career and he taught methods of crop rotation. Before Carver's time, southern farmers grew very few crops other than cotton which wore out the soil. Carver encouraged farmers to alternate between cotton and plantings of sweet potatoes, peanuts or soybeans, which add nitrogen to the soil, helping to keep it full of nutrients for other plants. Carver also wanted to ensure farmers could easily sell these extra crops and he set about developing products and recipes to distribute to the community. In his laboratory work, Carver developed 300 products from peanuts and 100 products from sweet potatoes. His efforts won him numerous awards and his innovative approach to crop rotation and developing products greatly improved the situation for farmers at the time. Alexander Graham Bell Alexander Graham Bell was born in 1847 in Scotland and was mostly educated at home. Bell's father taught elocution, how to speak clearly, and also explained ways of teaching people who were deaf and mute. When Bell was a young man, the family moved to Canada, where he made a name for himself teaching about visible speech at a large school for deaf mutes, and as a result of this work, thousands of deaf mutes in the United States can now speak, even though they cannot hear. Bell began working on a device which could convert sound vibrations into electrical currents and, with his assistant, designed two receivers. In 1875, with both receivers completed, Bell made the first telephone call from a room in his house down to the cellar. The first two-way call was made in 1876, again between two rooms in Bell's home. The first long-distance call was also made in 1876 by Bell to his assistant 10 miles away. In 1877, Bell established the Bell Telephone Company. It cannot be overstated the impact his invention had on the world. From small beginnings of two receivers in the inventor's house, to now almost everyone carrying a telephone in their pocket, Bell's invention revolutionised communication. Thank you for watching this video in my series 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World. The majority of the information for this video came from the books 100 Scientists Who Made History and the Britannica Guide to the 100 Most Influential Scientists. If you liked this video please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to check out my other videos such as my STEM experiment and explanation videos, robotics videos and my STEM career interviews. This has been STEM with Mr N's 100 Scientists Who Influenced the World, Incredible Innovators. Thank you.